Good evening. Hey, Caitlin, thanks so much. No problem. Uh, we got the we got the call this morning. Yeah. So uh, pardon us if we become half prepared, but we no. It's it's going to be you know the we need to make sure awareness is 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 the key at this point. Absolutely. I'm Caitlin Rock, chair of board of health. Yeah. And with me tonight is Cheryl Wolpe, uh, public health nurse, Thomas Underwood. Hey, thanks so much, Cheryl. So now we are very lucky to have a public health nurse on our staff. <coughs> we used to share uh, resources, but now uh, we've contracted with uh, Cheryl Wolpe. And uh, so we're, we're very, very fortunate nice. <laughs> to have her with us. Um, so essentially what I did in preparation was um, I went on the mass.gov website to look up what they had up about the coronavirus, mm -hmm. which then pushed me over to the CDC website, um, got some information, and I do believe you all had the fax sheet. Okay. Yep. I printed one out also. Um, the CDC website is, what I like about it is it's up to date. And, you know, as up to date as um, as everyone is. Um, what I did double check was that our town Sunderland Town website has the link. Yeah, I so saw that. So that was important, link was up and there. I wanted to make sure. And it was actually Cheryl who made sure it was up there, mm -hmm. which was great. Nice. Um, Cheryl actually did a report today, so that uh, for you guys. So she'll be going over the situation awareness report for the town. Right. Um, situation Awareness Report, Town of Sunderland Board of Health, Coronavirus COVID-19. Recently, a new strain of coronavirus 2019 novel coronavirus was detected in Wuhan, China. This novel coronavirus causes a respiratory lung illness. This new virus is related to but different from other coronaviruses that cause the common cold and other diseases such as SARS and MERS. Common symptoms experienced are fever, cough, and difficulty in breathing. Symptoms can range from very mild to severe. As of March 9, 2020, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention reported there are 423 confirmed cases of novel coronavirus, 19 deaths, and 322 individuals currently being monitored in the United States. Data include both confirmed and presumptive cases of no novel coronavirus reported to CDC or tested at CDC since January 21st, 2020. This data does not include information on testing results of persons repatriated to the United States from China and Japan. States are actively testing and publicly reporting their cases. In Massachusetts, there have been 27 presumptive cases and one confirmed case. A presumptive case requires confirmation by the CDC. Presently in the state of Massachusetts, the total number of quarantine cases, 719, those that have completed quarantine, 470, still undergoing monitoring, 249. While the risk of novel um, coronavirus for Massachusetts residents remains low, there is a possibility we may see it spread at a community level. How to protect yourself from coronavirus. Call your medical provider for fever, cough, or difficulty breathing. Frequently wash hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Cover cough, um, cover cough and sneezes using a tissue or your sleeve. Keep a six foot distance from people who are coughing or sneezing. In the event that someone is being monitored, this is what the self quarantine requirements are. Home quarantine for 14 days, and that's regardless if they come from a level three or a level two country, which I will explain to you in a minute. Case will have contact with public health um, via telephone and or texting daily. Case will record and report two daily temperatures, <coughs> limiting, limit in-person interactions for non-quarantine household members, meaning if a household member who is not part of the quarantine but decides they need to around and get groceries, um, as long as they're feeling well, um, they just take the same precautions as everybody else. Also, we'd like to advise you that isolation periods may differ depending on the length and severity of the symptoms. So to break down the type of notices, because we keep hearing on the TV about um, travel restrictions, so what does that mean to us? What that means is there's three levels. There's the three, two, and one, three being the one of most concern, and I'll break it down that way. So level three is the warning. Uh, warning three, avoid all non-essential travel to this destination. The outbreak is of high risk to travelers, and no precautions are available to protect against the identified increased risk. That includes the countries of China, Italy, South Korea, and Iran. Alert level number two. 
and practice enhanced precautions for this destination. The travel health notice describes additional precautions added or defines a specific at-risk population, and that would be Japan. Watch level is number one, practice usual precautions for this destination as described in the travel health notice and or the destination page. This includes being up to date on all recommended vaccines and practicing appropriate mosquito avoidance. And in relation to specific to coronavirus, it's the um, city of Hong Kong. Hmm. And that was my report. Oh, I do, I would like to compare quickly if I may, sure. the um, flu of what's happening with influenza right now since we don't right. seem to be really noticing that. So um, as of, let's see, 229.20, so at the end of February, there were 34 million, and this is, this is the statistics according to the CDC. 34 million people have um, had the flu this year. 20,000 have died, and out of that 20,000, 136 have been uh, pediatric deaths. Mm -hmm and hospitalizations are right around 350,000. Wow. So as you can tell, the flu, the flu bless you. Bless you. Is far, Stay over there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the flu is far more dangerous to us. Um, and we're much more susceptible to getting the flu than we are to getting the coronavirus. Right. But the problem with the coronavirus is right now they don't even have treatment a, a course of treatment so that's what's getting everybody so worked up mm -hmm. um, the percentage of deaths is actually as the number of cases gets identified that percentage is actually going down so it's at about 1%. Now, the 3% everyone's hearing is actually for that province in China. Mm -hmm. Then if you look at the world, I think it's about 1%. But as the case reporting goes up, that 1% actually goes down. So um, really, the, washing, the what you would do for the flu is what you do for the coronavirus. Um, as far as the community notifications, um, Frontier, has sent out, so the FERCOG has sent out, um, and that's actually based on the CDC, which sent it to the Massachusetts, which then sent it out to separate boards of health, um, DESE, the Department of um, Elementary and Secondary, Elementary and Secondary Education. Education, and then also to nursing homes. Uh, sample letters, sample notifications, uh, sample um, things to do, <laughs> and they've sent it out. Uh, I received one as a parent, but then I also received it through, uh, I'm also on the emergency task force, the emergency dispensing task force, so I've received it through several different ways. Um, letters home, Smart. Uh, kind of calming, trying to calm, saying pr practice good, hygiene. Um, school systems are trying to explain to parents that, you know, they've been sanitizing since flu season started. So they're trying to just keep that up. Um, and that's, and we are doing the same thing in our area. The, the same letters are going out, the same notifications. I don't know if you've noticed on the highways, the electronic Sandwich billboards yep. mm -hmm. are telling people to go to mass.gov to get yep. the facts. Um, and if, uh, hypothetically, if a case comes, uh, a purported case comes through our town, it gets reported to the Board of Health, to the public health nurse, who then monitors a quarantine, and then gets notification from the physician. Maven. Ma uh, through Maven. Maven. Through Maven. That it was negative after the quarantine and you know so we would hypothetically know what's going on in our town you know. so there's a method of notification there's a method of monitoring that's through public health correct and, and a public health which nurse would be yeah. our public health nurse and a reporting function which is a database yeah. a public health database which mm -hmm. our nurse and our um, 
inspector have uh, access to. Nice. But we we prefer to have the nurse You're right. do it yeah. because I, I think that plugging in, I mean, we all had access to it, but I chose someone with a medical degree <laughs> because you can you can read but I think that it, unless you understood what's underneath it right. um, and, and I'm not saying that um, Mr. Ball with all of his history mm -hmm. he actually would probably be the, the second best however I thought that it should should be someone with a medical sure. background um, yeah, I wouldn't want to give you a deposition there you right. go mm -hmm. accessing Maven um, so, um, and then she can follow up, and then we get, I get all the emails, I, you know, I get, and then we also have a central area, Smart. you know. Um, so, and so we're very well informed across the Board of Health, across our public health nurse, straight to Boston. Nice. Um, yes. And I, I think we've, we've done this now with other communicable diseases. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, with measles, mumps, anything that's come through our town. Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, especially. Um, so is that, that's, that's, people think about the coronavirus <clears throat> as being the subject matter of the particular flavor of the, of the month. And it's like, yeah, and little things like tuberculosis can roll through at any and and it time, has. too. Right? And it has. Right. And, and rabies. And rabies. Yes. And, We've and, done and, it. And, right. and so, so, okay, one of the reasons that, that, that our board felt it was important <laughs> is that I'm going to go on a limb right now, but I'm, I'm going to pretty confidently say that probably within the next few weeks are going to ha there's going to be a case near us, even our community. I'm not, and, and that's just math. Just, just, just math, math. Yeah. okay? Now, what does that mean? What, what that means is the best, best that we can do is for people to take self-responsibility and that self-responsibility is if you have a fever, if you have a persistent cough, and if you have difficulty breathing, you need to contact your primary care physician. They will, or you can call the Board of Health in the town of Sunday. We'll get back to you. But, but, most, but, but you, we all need to take responsibility and it's not just for ourselves, but for our family and our and our neighbors. And if you have a fever, a cough, or if you have difficulty breathing, those three things, then you really need to talk to your primary care physician. Also, if you're over the age of 60, okay, and you may not, and, and they'll tell you 60 is not old, but when they have looked at over 60, you may not want to go to New York City and visit the Met this weekend. Mm. Absolutely. Or the Guggenheim. Or, and and, and it's it just, it just making sure. good choices right now. And, and no one wants you to be a, and, and no one wants you to, 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 to ruin your life or whatever, but it's just to use, Right now, use an abundance of caution. That's all that they're asking. Well, I think that each person needs to assess themselves individually. Um, personally, my father just had open heart surgery. He just had a valve replaced. He also has diabetes, and he's 78 years old. Would I throw him at UMass at a basketball game? Probably not. <laughs> not right. Not during flu season either, right. to tell you the truth. <laughs> you know, and so... Um, you know, and yes, we are a an international community. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, it's it's silly to think that no, we'd never have COVID here, but it's also as dangerous as the flu. So I think that we really need to assess ourselves, assess our risk, and use good pra good clean, clean hands <coughs> practice. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the whole six foot radius. Um, and and, and know, Caitlin, that the, the important. most important thing is, is if, and I know a lot of us, will, it's easy to turn on the TV, but the simplest thing to do is go to www.cdc.gov. Absolutely. And or just go to our website, or, or you can and go we to have the links. Townofsunderland.us, and you can find it there. But go online and, and read it for yourself. One of, the, one of the people that write CDC memos 
lived used to live in Sunderland. Went to high school with him. Um, he, he's, a, he's a normal. He's a normal person. He writes in a no, normal language. And if you really want to get technical, you go to John Hopkins right. Communicable Disease, and and you can go on that website and you'll make your head spin how much. But that being said, we have the 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 town has the resources in place. We have talked to. Um, Jeff has talked to the library today, and we talked to our police department and the people that deal to make sure that we're trying to take, you know, every applicable change. It also, in the CDC guidelines, they do mention calling your primary care physician, right. not going to the emergency room. Right. Call them because first. Because not only does that expose you to other things, but it exposes everyone else sitting in the emergency room good waiting point, area. Very good point so if you here. call your primary care physician first, yeah, that's very important. So I, th I think that everybody's on the same page. Um, and and if you don't have a primary care physician, you can call the emergency <coughs> room. They will put a physician on to talk to you. Right. You so so even if and so if you don't and and again we have transit transient you know students and and people that may just move to the area if you don't have a local uh, primary care uh, provider call the emergency room they will let you to speak to a doctor and and they either can refer you to a, a primary care and or they can answer your questions for you or it would be even safer if they could just schedule a time for you to come in for a test right. and then they know schedule. where you are right. where you're going to be and get you into a specific place for a test instead of you sitting and waiting for triage in the emergency room. You know, I mean, I just think that it's just safer to make a phone call. I think it was interesting your numbers that you said 34, 35 million people have already had the flu this year mm -hmm. and the number of deaths that were just from the, and, and we haven't even talked about that. Right, right. exactly. So, I, I mean. It blows your mind, it really does when you compare those numbers together. Sure. And it's it an does. annual event. It's an annual event, yeah. thanks to the pandemic of 2009, H1N1. Right. right. Interesting. So again, wash your hands. And the flu shot is 50% this year. It That's is. It's pretty high. It's it 50 is. 50% yeah. effective. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> so. Well, we just thank you for coming, though. Okay. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks so very much. If you, if, you ever, if you ever want to talk to us, if you ever want to come in, update. Sure. Please, please just call Jeff and, and we're the highest rated Monday night access TV for Board of Selectmen in the town of Sunderland. Until Antiques Roadshow comes on, then, then it, it just drops right off. I know. Well, I watch Antiques Roadshow. It's our demographic. Roadshow, so. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Can you just email me the I'm just going to ask, yes. I'll yes. put it with a minute. Great. I Thank didn't have time, but I will get that to Absolutely. Cindy, who can get everyone a copy. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. We did, we did get a note from the Frontier Superintendent about a stepped up awareness of cleanliness, but also, more importantly, their housekeeping and disinfecting. Great. So, and Great. it's across the district. Yeah. Great. I just Thank said that, you. That's the reason I, that I was looking at my phone. Oh, you did? Okay, okay. great. Good. Well, I'm glad. All right. Thank you very great. much. Great. Thanks so much. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Franklin Tech.